everybody, this is Nuawans, and I want to start out first by saying thank you all so, so much for the 1K. I love each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you that are here, and I really hope that we can grow even bigger together. Secondly, I want to put this out here again because I've put it in a lot of my descriptions in my videos and it continues to be ignored. Please do not try to add me on VR chat or my private Discord unless you've talked to me first or you are active in my Discord. I do this in my descriptions, I put it in multiple times and it's continuously ignored and every time I get on VR chat there's at least four or five new set of requests and I'm not accepting them unless we've previously spoken about it. This is also makes it double hard because I have a terrible memory so I can't remember people who I've said I, I would add and I, I can't remember if I've added them yet or not. And it just, don't do it please. If you, if you like my channel, thank you. If you want to add me to tell me that you like my channel, thank you. You don't need to add me for that. You really don't. You can join my Discord and you can talk to me through there. You don't need to talk to me privately. Please. Now, since I've started streaming and doing YouTube videos, I've been having friends ask me about VTubing, which is great because I need more friends around here. So I'm happy to teach what little I know. This video is specifically a tutorial on different ways that you can get your own VTuber model as well as what you need at the bare minimum to set up your own VTuber content. As usual, I'm no way an expert and there may be better people out there for this or I might miss potential way or idea or something, and I'm sorry. This is purely my video on the ways that I know and the ways that I'm aware of right now. With that, let's jump to the video. To start, we're going to go over some different types of VTubers. I'm very ignorant on this topic since I've just started out and I don't really have any real connections with others, but that's okay. What I can tell you is there seems to be at least three different types of VTubers. There are the 3D tubers, 2D tubers, and PNG tubers. They're pretty self-explanatory. 3D tubers like myself are people who use 3D models to stream, record, etc. While 2D VTubers are people who use 2D models, movement, and are animated. Finally, we have PNG tubers. PNG tubers are people who have a PNG of their character and they use that. It's not animated and it's not 3D obviously, so that's pretty much the bare bones. And there is a lot of people who feel like PNG tubers don't really count in the VTuber community from what I've seen. And I could say personally that my opinion is if you think that you can suck an egg, anybody's allowed to stream. Look, my arm left because it's so upset. It was like, I don't even wanna be part of this conversation. I'm going to say this now, I am more versed in 3D because that's what I do. That's what we're gonna be talking about. In this video, I'll be talking about a few different ways to get your model made because everyone has their own level of experience and budget. And don't feel discouraged if you don't know what you're doing. I hope this will be a way to get you started with the tools and the information that you need. I also wanna quickly bring up PNGs again. PNGs are not just used by PNG tubers. They are used with all brackets of VTubing 3D and 2D. VTubers have a huge obsession with sharing the wealth and meeting others. There are tons of opportunities to post a photo of your own VTuber and talk about yourself and what kind of streams that you do. For example, I just recently posted one for VTubers to post their PNG and three types of Pokemon that they like for my Nuzlocke stream. In the VTuber community, people want to hear about your character. They want to they wanna come continue to network and get to know others and do collaborations with others. There are also discords that are specifically made for this. So that is why I highly recommend once you get your VTuber model picked out, if it's in 3D, you plan on putting it in VR chat, go ahead and take a transparent background photo, or perhaps you want to draw it, commission art, whatever. It's a great easy way to kind of send that photo out on Twitter, meet new people, get connections, all that jazz. Going back into how to get a VTuber model, we're gonna talk about five different ways to get one. And the first is the most obvious, which is a commission. This is the most obvious option and most likely the most expensive. Commissioners who make models from scratch can go from just a couple hundred dollars to thousands, depending on the experience and your specifications. This is a great option if you already have a very specific look that you're looking for and references that go with it. 
always make sure to go somewhere credible and to a person that has references and a safe way to pay. Because with everything else, there are scammers out there. My personal recommendation is to start through VR Chat Traders, which you can find through the VR Chat Discord. This Discord is specifically for people who do VR Chat commissions, and quite a few of those people do build models either from a base or from scratch. Another option is through Twitter. It's much harder to look for, but if you do find one person that's making models from scratch, you usually can use that to start finding other recommendations or the Twitter's recommendations for other commissioners. When working with a commissioner, it is more than likely that they will send you a file to upload to Unity. There are a ton of tutorials online on how to do this, so if you need help, either look it up or ask the person that you are commissioning and they can probably help you. But besides that, you have literally nothing that you need to do and no experience whatsoever besides giving the money, giving the references, and then checking up every once in a while. Let's say you don't really have a look that you want and you don't really have a huge budget. The next option would to be buying a model already made. A website called Booth has hundreds of models hand sculpted by extremely talented creators that make most of their models VR chat compatible. In the description is a quick link to start searching. These models can go from just $15 to $80 on average. Now, when working with paid models, there are some important things that you must look out for. First off, I always recommend checking the work of the creator and possibly their Twitter. Usually they'll have posted progress of models they've made, which should be enough evidence that they didn't just steal a model and run off with it. In the 3D model community, there is a very particular body base that people like to use a lot, known as TDA. You've probably seen TDA quite often as Miku characters, or if you play VR chat in general, but they are slowly losing their popularity due to more realistic proportions. It is extremely important to make sure the body and head that you use is not TDA. In their terms of service, no commercial use is allowed, and the creator is already breaking the rules by reselling the base. But you can also get in trouble for trying to use it for your streaming if you're an affiliate or partner on Twitch, or you monetize your videos on YouTube. That is the reason I had to change my avatar from my previous one to this one, since the head I was using was unconfirmed TDA. Booth honestly doesn't have a problem with this, but if you are a VR chat player who does join different kinds of discords related to the game, you may have seen people selling their own avatars, and they could be using this base. A great way to tell if the base that you are using is TDA is looking at the textures. This is what the head and body textures look like, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. You could also just ask the creator if they use TDA, because most of the time they'll answer honestly. The second thing you need to make sure is that the model is even allowed to be used commercially. Back with VRChat Discord models, honestly just ask them if they don't have it written in the terms. They'll usually tell you. But with Booth, their website is in Japanese, and you'll need to use something like Google Translate to get more information. Even with the lackluster translation that Google gives, you can usually understand pretty clearly what the terms are for a model you are buying. If you are unsure, you can always try to contact the creator to check, or just completely skip the model altogether. I'm antisocial, I usually do the latter. Once you get your model though, we're on a split path. Some of you may be happy with how it looks already and just want to jump right into VTubing. That's completely fine, just make sure the creator has rules saying it's okay to use as it is. Might come as a shock, but some creators do not allow their models to be unchanged and used commercially. This is because the characters usually have their own backstories and maybe they use it for their own VTubing, so by using the exact same character, it gets confusing, so they just they, they would rather you change something on it rather than just leaving it as it is. If you have a more specific look in mind, we're moving to Photoshop or GIMP. You could do things like just taking the model and changing the colors, or if you want to make bigger changes, you could throw it into Unity to add what you wanted. Some models come in separate meshes to make it easier to make changes in Unity only. But if your model doesn't have this option, you're going to have to go back to Blender. I also want to add that if you're planning on putting this model into VRChat, I recommend putting it back into Blender anyways, because it is not optimized having, you know, 10 different materials and meshes for one model. Just like before, make sure to check the info on the booth to make sure that you're even allowed to make these kinds of changes. Just like previously, some content creators do not like it when people change their models. They made it for that specific reason, and you can use it commercially as is, but you cannot make changes to it. So now we're getting into how I made this particular particular model, which I call mix and match. If you have a base that you like and you can use commercially, for example, Panda's base is what I use, but nothing else, it's time to go shopping. 
Once again, I use Booth and personally with the occasional search to the VRC discords that share their own model assets to use. And as I said previously, I make sure that I am allowed to use what is made and throw it all to Blender. This will take some knowledge on how to make models and a video will eventually be coming out on my personal tricks that I use to make things easier. This will give you a bit more freedom on how you'd like your model to look, but can also help cut costs comparing to making it from scratch. This model total came to about $100, and that's including the base that I use for all of my other models that I make non-commercially. This also lets you change out the outfits you want on your model to have for different occasions. If you know what you'd like to have on the model, but don't want to take the time to learn Blender, you could also just commission someone to do it for you. I just recently had a client who wanted models for this very reason, and I made sure everything I used was commercial use only. There are people out there who will take the time to help you make what you are looking for. Once again, you can check out the VRC Traders Discord for these kinds of people, or Twitter. Let's say none of these are really working for you, because maybe you struggle to find parts you like, or you don't want to spend a large sum of money. Perhaps your budget is closer to $20 or $30, and you don't want to use someone else's model. Well, there is one final choice, and that is Vroid. If you haven't heard, Vroid is an amazing free application that allows you to create models for free, with the rights of the models going to you. Best part is, you can not only just use the models that you make commercially, but you can also sell anything you make as a preset. This will take some time to learn, but the program is extremely easy to work with, and there are tons of tutorials online on how to use it. If you have a small budget and still aren't sure how to create clothing or the hair you want, Booth also has Vroid presets that are usually up to $20, but are average around $5. There are also some free ones too if you really aren't looking to spend any money. This can be a great opportunity to start out with, because it gives you the freedom to make your VTuber however you want it to look like. The benefits to mixing and matching here is that instead of struggling with Blender and weight painting, presets are already automatically weighted for you, so you could jump straight into Unity once you're finished. Even if you never plan to use this application, I will highly recommend giving it a try at least once. It also wouldn't be fair if I wouldn't give the final obvious answer, which is sculpting your own model from scratch. This will obviously take the longest time compared to all of the others, especially if you have no prior experience. and it takes the most effort. It will also probably be the most rewarding since you can say it's made completely by you and you've got a new skill set. There is a YouTuber who has a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to sculpt a human body from scratch, link in the description. Before you jump into this one though, I want to give a very important warning. To make a model from scratch means you have to first sculpt the body, texture it, rig it, weight it, make visemes for the mouth and eyes and whatever else you want, then work on the clothing and the details, then take it and put in the shaders, etc. This kind of project could take weeks, even months, and you don't think you're going to be the kind of person that stays motivated on a project that long, Vroid might be the better option for you. So those are the five ways you can get a 3D model. Now let's talk about application. You own your model, now what? That depends on what kind of VTuber you're hoping to be. One thing will stay completely consistent though. You need a program to record yourself. I personally use OBS to record and stream. It's a free program, I highly recommend it. It is pretty user friendly and you can do a lot with it like recording only certain audio and video or switching between screens while streaming. If you own a VR and plan to only use it in VR social games like VR chat or chill out, you're good to go. Get set up, put the model in game and start streaming. But what if you wanna stream something else? Personally, whenever I do get my official model finished, it will not be going into VR chat. There are too many clients out there that love to swipe private avatars that I feel it's not worth the risk. A lot of VR chat streamers constantly lose their models to thieves, which is why the second model exists. This one. Not only is it as a placeholder, but it also will be the one that I use if I choose to record in game, since this stuff is all easily accessible. I'll go more into detail about the other options later, but make sure to keep that information in mind when choosing where you upload your model. Maybe one day this will be fixed, but who knows. If you want to stream VR games, but not social VR games like Chill Out, VR Chat, Neos, etc., I recommend Suva. Suva is an application that allows you to upload and record your own VTuber model while also playing VR games. I've not used it very often, just because I'm lazy with my streaming, but I do find it very easy to use. I'm not able to use full body tracking with it at this current moment, so be aware of that if you were hoping for full body. Though, while you can't use full body, you can use your full body trackers to record yourself without being in VR. 
This has its ups and downs, but overall it works pretty well if you can find a way to secure your tracker to your head. The best part though about Suva is you don't have to use their own shaders for your model. So if you have a very specific look, it is great to work with. Now, if you wanted to stream a non-VR game or don't own a VR headset, we've got you too. There are many applications for this and Suva may work, but I've never tried it. So I'm gonna be talking about VC Face instead. This is what I've been using to, while I stream, and while it does give that 2D-ish look, it still works great and is super easy to use. The one big issue I have with this application is the limits on shaders. Unlike Suva, you must use a specific shader that comes with VRM. I won't explain how to make your model VRM friendly, I will give a link to the tutorial I use down below, or you can find someone to commission for this. You also have to use spring joints instead of dynamic bones. If you don't know what these are, they're what make your hair move, or your tail move, or my ears move. <sighs> Luckily, spring joints are honestly easier to work with than dynamic bones, but if you're used to dynamic bones, just get ready to learn a new way of movement. What you'll need for this program is just a mic and a camera, and that's it! I love how easy it is to use this program to stream, and it gives me an easier time to switch between facial expressions while I stream compared to Suva. There is also still one final option if you wanted to record full body movement. I've set this up, but I haven't actually put it into application just yet, so I cannot say much. It definitely looks much more legit and entertaining to watch, but you must have at least four trackers, and then your controllers for your hands. There's another really nice YouTuber who goes into detail about two different ways you can do this, so I'll just leave both links below. I will give a warning though, this one does cost a little bit of money, and they're still working on the tutorial for the newest version that is cheaper than the older version. You could also get matte cap soup if you're just having a grand lying around, but if you're just starting out, I'd, uh, I don't recommend that. The last subject we have to talk about is credits. Now. If you made the model yourself through Vroid or through sculpting, you don't have to worry about this unless you use presets. But for all other options, this is extremely important. If you're looking into being a VTuber, you're probably planning on also trying to either get monetized on YouTube or affiliate or partnered on Twitch. It is so very important to make sure once again that you have all of the rights to the model that you are using. The YouTuber I mentioned before has an amazing video on the channel, so if you want a bigger breakdown on this, link is also below. Keep yourself protected when you're looking for a model. If you plan to commission, make sure the terms are clear on both sides. This includes merch in the future. While shopping for my own model creator, I had to specify that I may want to do merch for my character in the future. Some commissioners do charge more for that, and they say so in their contract. There's usually a commercial use upcharge for these models because you'll be making money using the model and you will want this in writing. If you watch the video I recommended, you heard a small story about Project Melody. She's a very popular VTuber who worked with someone on her model. They got everything settled, she got the contract she needed to say she owned the rights, and all was well. But because she made it big, the creator tried to get her account taken down because of past drama. If she did not have that contract clearly stating that she had full ownership of that model, and therefore the commercial use, she could have lost a lot. Always make sure to cover your bases and never try to be sneaky. It will bite you in the back. When using your model, just like using art, have your credits in the video or in your stream. Someone took time making the parts or the whole model that you're using, the least you could do is give them the credit for it. It's just common courtesy. Honestly, with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so much if you stayed for the whole thing. I hope this will help you get started on your very own VTuber adventure. If you have any questions, never hesitate to ask in the comments. And I'll try to get back to you, or someone else may know and reply before I can. I've got another question for everyone though. Who is your favorite VTuber? And what do they usually do for the content? I'd love to see everyone's recommendations, and thank you all once again for all the love and support, and as usual, drink some water, eat some broccoli, and have a great day. See y'all in the next video.